Ukrima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled, It is unclear whether the national dialogue will be either national or a dialogue, part four. You say that unless the meanings of national and dialogue are interrogated, there will be no national dialogue. So is that not an academic exercise? Well, it's not an academic exercise in a country where there's a history of exclusion. I'm not only talking of apartheid, I'm not only talking of xenophobia, I'm t- talking of hostility between peoples of various types. We come from a society with a lot of unity and a lot of division. So we've got to understand who is part of this country. You know, when there was xenophobia, people who were not foreigners were attacked. People who are Chitsonga in the north, in the Limpopo area, were sometimes attacked as being foreigners. So there's a history of division in this country. So we've got to ask ourselves, who do we have in mind to be part of this? Uh, But also, is it the elite is it only the elite or are we the elite don't have grievances of the same character as people who are from the working class or the unemployed those people will they get a hearing and how do they get a hearing so that if they're wanting to achieve unity through this how are they going to get unity if they're not clear about who is participating. Because everyone, if everyone who participates come to 100 people and you get unity about, amongst them, is that national unity? It's unity of the people in the hall and not the rest of South Africa. And you say that patriarchy will negatively impact the presence of women and people identified with other sexualities in the national dialogue. Why and how? See, one's got to be very conscious of how patriarchy works. It's something which is not spelt out. Uh, but when a woman is married, very often they are at home. They are the uh, homemakers and the caregivers at home. Consequently, for the husband to attend something like this is accepted as natural. For a, a wife to attend it is not natural because they are the ones who have to have the meal ready when the husband gets back and all sorts of things like that. But it's also the case that... Our society is very patriarchal despite what our constitution says and there's an assumption that leaders are men. Now, we've got more numbers of women, but it's not clear that it's created more power for them. So there's got to be a conscious effort, not just to include, but to include in a meaningful way. I remember when I went to parliament in 1994, At about three o'clock, women were were drifting off because they were going to buy food to cook the supper that night. So the women MPs were still housewives who had to provide the meal for the husbands who were either in Parliament or living in Cape Town while they were in Parliament. So that these things seep into everywhere. With regard to LGBTQI plus uh, people, it's patriarchy that determines that heterosexuality is the only form of legitimate sexual activity in the country. And consequently, there are barriers in the way of people who do not practice heterosexual relationships to get involved in most things, they get get a club when they're on the way there uh, and so forth. And that is how, that is also something you've got to be aware of. And there's no sense that other than referring to something in passing, 
that there's a real intention to deal with the situation. There still is prevalent homophobia in this country. And also, Raymond, what have you got against a sense of oneness as a goal of the dialogue? See, unity, get unity, is not the same as us all being the same. Uh, in the sense that every unity has within it distinct components, people with distinct identities. And it's very important that we recognize the value and validity of people having distinct identities, speaking different languages, following different religions if they're religious, uh, dealing with certain customs and cultures that are diverse in this country. We're not trying to make everyone one. Now, a lot of literature talks about ethnic chauvinism as if pursuing a distinct identity is divisive. Pursuing distinct identities ought to enrich our country as a whole. And it's very important that we don't elevate oneness as being more important than unity or treat them as the same. We're not trying to make everyone the same if we have a national dialogue. I mean, I'm not advocating the national dialogue myself, not involved in it, but I don't think that to make everyone one and erase what is distinct about them cannot be uh, an objective of the national dialogue. And lastly, why do you question the issue of reference to citizens? Well, when the president was inaugurated, and on a lot of other occasions, there's been refer and in the statement of intent, there's reference to the clause, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, which comes from the Freedom Charter and from the Constitution. And then there's also reference to citizen. Now, the two don't go together because all who live in South Africa are not just citizens. They are citizens and non-citizens who share the same uh, environment very often, live under the same conditions with water being erratic, sometimes not having water, sometimes not, sometimes having sewage running through the streets or even through their homes. They are citizens and non-citizens who work together. And we've got to be clear that if all who live in it is what we are addressing it, it cannot only be citizens. And I think we've got to uh, be very clear about it, that many of these people have been here all their lives and they have as much right to speak about their conditions and others we have this piece of paper called a citizen's uh, identity document. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about it is unclear whether the national dialogue will be either national or a dialogue, part four.